Hey guys, welcome to Mountain Woman Radio. This is your host, Tammy Trayer, and I am so excited. We are on episode number 202. This is my seventh season doing Mountain Woman Radio. And for those of you that are new to our show, my family and I embraced an off-grid lifestyle in 2010. And you can find our uh, archives of our journey at treyerwilderness.com as well as on YouTube. And um, we just enjoy sharing our knowledge, our experiences, our faith, and, and our journey with you. And um, I'm really excited about today's show. Again, it is number 202. So if you want to find the archives on our website, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash podcast dash 202. The reason I'm excited about today's show is over the years and shortly after embarking on our off-grid journey, I had the privilege and honor to meet who I call now my dear friend, Millie Copper. And as things had progressed through our friendship, we also had an incredible opportunity to build one of the mountain man's cabins um, on their property in Wyoming several years ago. So our friendship has formed and has been growing and I am extremely excited to have her on today because she's not only a dear friend, but she is a best-selling author and has a fabulous series that you guys have to hear about. But I want to introduce her to you first. And just she's an amazing person, and I know you guys will enjoy our conversation today. So, Millie, thank you so much for joining me today. Tammy, thanks so much for having me. You're so sweet. <laughs> ah, I I enjoy your friendship so much, and it's just been funny how things have transpired for us, and just the different things that have gone on over the years. But share share with my audience uh, a little bit about yourself. Sure, I'd be happy to. But I should start by saying I just had the big propane truck drive up into my yard to put a wet leg on my propane tank. Okay. So hopefully he won't come knocking on the door okay. anytime soon. Um, <laughs> well, and if if he does, always, it's always something. I know. Well, and I'm always afraid of my dogs taking my equipment up in the air or the mountain man coming in. <laughs> so if we have to pause, this is real life for both you and I. And by the way, Millie lives a very similar lifestyle as we do now. She is also um, living uh, off the grid and very self-reliantly. But share share about yourself, Millie. Tell us about you and your family. Sure. Yes. Well, we are not completely off the grid anymore. I don't okay. think I told you we actually did hook up to the local power okay. station. We still have our solar system, Okay. but we do have power now also. Okay. So what I have is a small solar system with dedicated outlets. Um, because even though we do have regular power, it goes out fairly regular. <laughs> okay. Uh, and especially in the spring, it's mildly amusing that they're always, and I haven't been on it, but just a couple of months, but in the springtime, I heard that the power was out often because the pelicans that live on the river <laughs> were being scared by the coyotes and running into the power lines and knocking the power out. No I way. I don't know what to say about that. I know. Um, That's really funny. You would think it would yeah, be the so winter. I will report back in the springtime <laughs> as to whether I have reliable electricity with the pelicans or not. Um, but, so we did live three and a half years completely off the grid like you. Only we actually, you guys, I think, had a few more amenities beginning other than we never lived in a tent um, <laughs> but we didn't have running water for it was um three years before okay. we had full-time running water okay so that was quite the adventure my husband we he would run out to the cistern and bring it in a gallon or five gallons at a time and so he said that he was the running water <laughs> <laughs> but it it has been amazing definitely amazing to have this experience and part of me is really sad that we hooked on to the power it just um it just didn't make sense anymore for us to not have it when it was right at our doorstep okay okay I get that. And and I remember that you had to carry the water for quite some time. That is, that is a chore because I had our water pump go out um, not too long ago while Glenn was out of town. So I was, I was carrying water. And I don't mind it. It takes you back to the uh, pioneer days. But it is a 
it is a task. Yes, yes, and, and and it's not bad. I mean, during the summer, it's not bad. It's on those days when it's thirty six below that it's not very much fun. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I'm not telling you anything. How much right. snow do you have right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't mention that earlier. We. Guys, when I recorded last Friday, I showed you the snow, and we had 20 inches of snow. It snowed for the last four days, and Sunday we had snow all day long, and it is snowing again. We're supposed to get another six to nine inches, so we've got well over 36 inches of snow outside. So it is it is quite wild, and I'm very actually thankful about that because this is the kind of winter we had our very first winter here, and this will be our last winter here. So I'm excited to be able to enjoy this much snow and just the snow back here being stuck back here. It's just kind of romantic to me. So <laughs> it's, it's like bookends, the first and the last. I know. I know. It's kind of, it's kind of neat. Uh, just, it, it, touched me yesterday in in that regard that that's exactly what it's like <laughs> yeah I like it so share some more about your family your son you are homeschooling your son and you have um yes yeah, so he is in fifth grade now okay. um we've always homeschooled him so okay. he uh doesn't know any different right. um we're it's it, you know, every day is a new adventure, and as as you know, Tammy, every day homeschooling kind of tends to look a little bit different yep. uh, than the day before, yep. and um, today was a little bit lighter day for him. He got a uh, robotics kit for his birthday, okay. so after he did his basics, the, you know, math and reading and writing, he's just been working on putting his mechanical engineering robotic arms together. Oh, very cool. Um, very cool. I can see him yeah. being super excited about that. And, and yes. that's, that's what makes our lifestyle nice is that we, you know, we were, both of us were able to adapt to our homesteading needs as well as our schooling needs and as a result we had a lot of additional things to share um, I know some of your first books were on um, clean eating and and um, preparing a pantry and 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 such it's true yes I uh, and in fact I think we met through um, <laughs> traditional foods yes we both uh, <laughs> You know, are a fan of things like sourdough and nope. uh, sauerkraut and, you know, just traditional foods that go back to the beginning of time. Nope. Um, and I do, I've had a blog since 2009, I think, okay. on uh, tr basically on traditional foods and how, how to make that lifestyle change. And then it, I've expanded it to include homesteading and homeschooling and home other stuff. So it's uh, a... <laughs> Homespun Oasis is the name of the blog, and I do have four nonfiction books. Uh, one of them is actually available for free if you go to my blog, um, and it's, they're all on traditional eating or stocking the real food pantry. Awesome. Yeah, and, and that was exactly how we met. And what's funny is we think of you all the time because I make that Thai dish that you made. Now, when we were building Millie's cabin, she was she came for the one weekend and she cooked for us the whole weekend. And one of the dishes she made was chicken. It was a, a, a Thai dish that had coconut milk in it and peanut butter. And it was absolutely amazing. And we all got hooked. So I make that all the time. And while we're eating that, we're always thinking of you and talking about you guys. So it's pretty funny. <laughs> And we used to raise them for the neighborhood, too, um, so people could have clean-eating chickens. Uh, up here, we haven't started doing that, and we don't eat nearly as much chicken because I don't really like to buy it from the grocery store. I hear but that. I that same dish out of antelope. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's... Yeah funny because that's exactly what we do. I'm I'm the same way. We refuse to buy meat from the grocery store. We were raising our chickens, but we butchered them all beginning of last year uh, just because we couldn't afford to feed them anymore and we knew we were planning to move. So yeah, ours has been elk and, and deer and mule deer as well. So you can use any kind of meat, but man, I'll tell you what, our, both for both of us, our non-GMO meats that are available to us are just unbelievable. <laughs> 
Absolutely, yes. <laughs> antelope, we love antelope. Um, and I know uh, if you haven't had antelope, it is, it, uh, it's, I don't know, it has a great flavor and it's just our favorite. Um, but it, it kind of gets a bad rap sometimes, uh, <laughs> but uh, we like it. I think so. it. I think it gets a bad rap because it depends what it's eating and it depends where what it's feeding on because a lot of times... Um, the meat tends to hold the flavor of what they're feeding. But I agree with you, antelope is amazing. All, I, I really love all of the wild game. And this year we got so lucky that everything that we shot is just so tender and so just amazing. I'm, I'm so thankful. <laughs> Yes, that's too. My husband, he got a doe uh, mule, mule deer, okay. uh, doe mule deer, that she's fork tender, and that's just amazing. She's the best the best deer we've ever had. Oh, that's awesome. So, that's but, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> harvesting our own food, that's something I know that we both yes. enjoy. Yes. I was actually messaging with Millie one day, and she was out hunting, or had been out hunting, and in a valley where there was a lot of grizzly bear signs, so uh, she's quite... You know, she's she's got the, the crazy stuff going on in her neck of the woods, too, and she's out there doing the same kind of thing. So it's pretty awesome. We have a lot in common. <laughs> yes, and I, I do have to admit, I'm cautious. <laughs> uh, I was elk hunting, and it was just barely daylight, uh. and I looked down, and I saw a bear print. Um, so I, I did momentarily think... I should leave, uh, but it was an old one. It wasn't fresh. It had it was crusted over, so frozen overnight. Um, I didn't get an elk though, but and I didn't see the grizzly bear, so it, it was fine. <laughs> but it certainly does make your heart beat a little faster, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, it does. It definitely does. But I live where I live. Um, we actually do have grizzly bears on the river and um, on the creek. Yeah. So it is. It is just a way of life here. Yeah, and we're fortunate. We don't have the grizzlies as bad. They are making their way into our area. Um, we have had sightings, but our bigger thing is the wolves and the uh, mountain lions tend to uh, frequent our area. So, uh, and wolves are really bad right now. So that's that's been an issue. But but I just thought that was so cool. I'm like Annie Oakley's out there hunting today. <laughs> yes, and actually, one I was supposed to go hunting another day, like a few days after that day. Um, but the, where I was hunting was on a ranch, and the guy called me and said, you probably shouldn't come out because we had a wolf kill last night. So wow. um, I, one of his calves was killed. So, wow. yes, wolves are here also. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, it's pretty crazy. Lately, you know, you have to be almost concerned that when you shoot that they're going to come into the shot. We've had some really weird experiences. I've actually had to pop off a shot twice while I was walking the dogs because they were coming into me calling the dogs. So it was pretty crazy. Yeah, and if you're shooting, you know, it's like ringing a dinner bell. Right. Those grizzly bears and wolves know. Right. They know. Yep, yep. That's their food yeah. call. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And before I forget to mention it, um, Millie mentioned her website. You can go to her author page also, which is milliecopper.com. It's M-I-L-L-I-E-C-O-P-P-E-R.com. And on there um, is a link to her blog, so it'll take you directly to her information. But she's got great materials, great recipes, great um, information, and she's got a really pretty pretty view from her home and uh, I think you'll greatly enjoy checking out her information and in the show notes on our website you will also find uh, all the links as well as in the description below for the YouTube so um, you can find that and I'm going to link you right to her books you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper and it will take you right to her author page where you can find all of her books but Millie I, I have to tell I have to tell you guys I am so proud and so excited for for Millie because she. When did your first? When did you release those books? Was it October or November? It was October twenty fifth. It was, and that actually, I picked that day because it was my fiftieth birthday, ah! and I thought, <laughs> you know, if I'm gonna do this, let's let, let I'm gonna give myself a birthday present. That so is I so funny. Them on my fiftieth birthday. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is so funny because when I released my uh, How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle, I released that on my birthday also for the same exact reason. So that is so funny. And I didn't realize that. So happy birthday. It, we're both we're both surfing that year of 50. And you know what? I don't feel 50. And I'm sure you don't either because we're both out in the mountains and climbing around and living beyond our age anyway or below our age. I'm not sure how you want to put that. but. <laughs> trying definitely i think that's a big yes. a big thing and i actually talk about this a lot in my blog um how a few years ago and i know you know tammy i got really sick and yep. i couldn't hardly do anything i spent a lot of time just on the couch yep um so uh when i i started getting better i made myself a promise i was going to embrace an active lifestyle yep um yep so that's been it's been a goal to to do as much as I can. So yes, we hunt, we hike, we backpack, yeah. uh, we ski and snowshoe. And you know what? We started 15 months ago. We started taking martial arts. I remember um, you telling my husband me. And son and I. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yes. And and you know, so, eating right too plays such a big role in that for both of us as well. And we've both been to that place. And it's funny. I think we. My goal for this year is to have a stronger. And, and better body at 50 than I have my whole life. And, and that's just out of self-care and, um, and, and wanting to live the rest of my life very clean and very healthy. And it's just funny you say that because I think we're both totally on the same page in that regard. And we've both been flat on our backs and, and it changes your perspective. It changes your goals. It changes you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just, I'm so thankful to, to God for giving me a second opportunity yes. to be able to yep. um, embrace, embrace health. Yes. Yep. Me too. Me too. And it's, it, last year, my, it's like a renewal. Last year, my theme was new beginnings. This year is faithfully forward. And, you know, as I said in the podcast last week, we have the opportunity to change everything in a second. And and we are responsible for a lot of what makes up and creates our life. We have the ability to change. We have the ability to focus on what we want to focus on and, and live the way we want to live, more so than we give ourselves credit or realize. And I think that once, like you and I, we've hit that place, it becomes our our focus, uh, you know, because we've had that second chance. And and it's like um, one of the big things I was talking about last year in my podcast and in my Facebook Lives was that, you know, we, we're we going through chaos and we have a choice to focus on the chaos or focus on the joy. And I refuse to focus on the chaos, you know, and, and I, I referred to it as an amazing storm. And it's perspective, I think. I like that theory of, you know, what are you going to focus on? Because it is right. it's so easy to just get overwhelmed by yes. everything. Yep. And some days, and I know that you probably have experienced <laughs> this, some days there's just that little bit of a glimmer yes. to grab onto. Yep. 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 And I've, you know, people have always told me that I wear the pink shady glasses and you know what now in my life, I'm like, yeah, I do. Because in my little pink shady world, my world is good and I make it that way. And, and it's not that I'm, I'm living in a, a delusional world. It's that I'm creating my own happiness by choice. And I'm looking for that shiny petty penny in the, in the muck and mire, you know? I do. Um, and, you know, you say that, looking for that shiny penny. And when you said that, I thought you, I always think of you every time I see a heart. Um, and, Chris, and my son also will be out walking and he'll see like a heart shaped rock and he'll like, oh, he'll be like, oh, Tammy was like this. <laughs> That's um, so funny. So, That's so, so funny. Maybe the shiny little. Heart-shaped rock is how I think of you. <laughs> well, that's so funny. And you know what? If I was downstairs, I'm in my office right now recording with you. Downstairs on top of my herbal pantry is the rock I found when we got out of the truck like sardines. We looked like the bunch of clowns getting out of our truck at her house because we had two dogs and four adults in the truck. It was insane. And um, I walked along her creek bed down there and found the absolutely 
perfect rock. I will take a picture of it for those of you on the YouTube and put it at the end of the video just so you can see the kind of rocks I find and what Millie saw me finding. So it was pretty amazing. It was absolutely perfect. <laughs> oh, that's funny that you said that. <laughs> Even after all this time, I know. And, you know, for my son to be like, oh, there's another rock for her every time, every time. <laughs> oh, that's classic. Because I think of him when he was digging in the stone pile and finding all the little, because both in, in uh, Wyoming and uh, Montana, Idaho, we have a lot of gem type rocks in our grounds. And with us digging holes and digging footers and all that stuff, we were finding all kinds of little treasures. And I remember him sitting there and that's what we were spending a lot of our time doing was digging through the piles of rocks so he's after my heart <laughs> yes uh yeah we we do not have a shortage of rock no not at all <laughs> i should take a picture of my rock pile in the backyard with my latest construction it's crazy. <laughs> i believe it i believe it remember how long it took to get your footers dug we i mean it was nothing but rocks it was quite that was an like experience the job that was never going to end <laughs> i know i know oh we had such a good time building her cabin but before, I, I don't want to get off track because this is the most important part to me today, is sharing Millie's new book series. Um, why don't you share about it? Uh, I have to say, I've read them all except for the new one that is going to be released. Is that the 22nd or the 17th? Uh, the 22nd. Okay. It is going to be released on the 22nd. It's uh, um, part four yes. of the series. The title of the book is Shields and Ramparts. Um, and I, um, I'm excited. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fun, uh, it was a fun one to write if they all were, but, um, it was, this one really kind of took me to new places. Yeah. So, uh, cool. so it's part four. The first three were all released on my birthday. Cool. Uh, that's called Caldwell's Homestead, Katie's Journey, and Molly's Quest. And the three books kind of work together, so you would want to read them in order. And, you know, I'm the kind of girl that reads a series in order anyway, even right. if the books are all uh, independent. Right. <laughs> so, but these right. do work together, um, and they're just a piece of a world that's changing. So the genre that they're in is futuristic Christian and post-apocalyptic. Um, so it's kind of look a different look at today's world, what could happen. Yes. So, um, and the fourth book, once it, it, it'll be out, and then there is a fifth book and a sixth book, and there's probably going to, it's probably going to wrap up with book seven. Okay. So. Okay. Um, they are uh, awesome. Was, they ahead. are absolutely awesome. You nailed it. Everybody that I have sent to your books has told me they are anxiously awaiting this release. I am anxiously uh, awaiting this release. These books are addicting. And I love that you refer to them as cozy apocalyptic books because they, it's just such an awesome series. You know, there's, there's no foul language. There's no, you know, blood and guts. There's no sex scenes. It's, it's clean, but it takes you to places that are really awesome. It it also challenges. I, I live self reliantly. I live a preparedness lifestyle, and I love 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 how you are challenging the people of today to think about these things, which is so incredibly important because they are all things that could happen. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Um, and it, they definitely could happen. I mean, we. We don't like to think of gloom and doom. I right. Mean, you, you and I, you know, right. rose-colored glasses. Exactly. But, exactly. I mean, all you have to do is read the news. Yes. And, and <laughs> think, hmm, maybe things aren't so rosy and cheery everywhere. Right. So, and 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 it doesn't mean to be to be prepared, or uh, it doesn't mean you have to be prepared for the apocalypse. For, no. You know, for the end of the world. No. Nope. Everybody could have their own apocalypse. I mean, how many volcanoes are going off? right now right and people are fleeing they're yep. they are in their own little apocalypse yeah uh, we all remember katrina hurricane katrina yep. and you know that and the, michael and all the hurricanes that have hit since then yeah you know those those things happen i started becoming interested in preparedness when i lived in oregon and we had a big storm i think they called it the gale force storm or something and we had 130 mile an hour winds Yep. The trees were all knocked over. The power was out for a week. Wow. It was after that 
that I started looking at preparedness. Yep. And um, even though my books are fiction, it does kind of coincide a little bit because the family in my books, they became aware of needing to be prepared because of a similar disaster as my real life experience. Right. Well, and that was one of the great treasures for me. In reading Millie's books, I know Millie and her family very well. And as I was reading, you know, when you read a book, you, you put faces with the characters and you really go into, you, you get a mental picture and even, for lack of better terms, travel into that book and are part of it following along. And I couldn't help but see her family the whole time I was reading this book, which really made it so much more special for me. I really, I, it was just really cool. And, um, you said about being prepared. We are steadfast with 36 inches of snow and no means of getting out of here. So having food, thousand pounds of potatoes before winter set in and two elk and two deer, we are eating like kings and queens, and we are well set. We just can't go anywhere, and nobody can get to us. So it's kind of fun that way. And and you said about also something else you said that made me chuckle, because I know we're both in the same arena, in that, you know, you look at the news, and, and, and you see how things are, where you and I and our families have created our own little kind of, as she puts it, oasis. Um, where we, we make our, kind of live by our own terms in a lot of ways. We're still connected with the world, but not like everybody else is in it 24 seven. And, and, you know, we, we choose not to be. So our, our life is very different. And I also think that we see things very different than the rest of the world because we're not in it. Yes, I agree. And, um, and I say, you know, check out the news, but I don't actually have a TV. I know, me so neither. <laughs> I, I look on the internet for the news, but I don't have that, you know, 24-hour yep. news channel on. So. Exactly, because it's so depressing. I quit doing that years and years ago. I think it's been like 12 or 13 years that we've had a TV. And, and it enables you to search for the news when you want to search for it, not be inundated by it every second of the day and all you hear is doom and gloom which I think is also why we can view the world and our lives and our and find our joy and our happiness so much easier because of that I, I think you might be right about that yeah yeah but your books are so fantastic and I cannot wait to get my hands on the newest one but they're very addicting they're very um they're hard to put down and um uh, she has just done such a fabulous job. I love the way she introduces things in one book and picks it up in the next. And it's just, it's just very awesome. I'm very, like I said, I am very proud and very excited for her because this, this is my favorite book series to date. And I've read some really amazing books and there's other series that I am addicted to and I've read multiple times, but this is my favorite to date. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you guys got to check it out. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, and like I said, it's been fun writing it. And oh, and I, I'd like to mention, I have the four in the series, but I also have a prequel, yes. which people can find for free on my website. Um, just so, you know, you can learn a little bit more about how I write. Yes. Um, and I'm also having, I'll have another book out at the end of February, I think. February 29th is the goal date for release. Okay. And it's going to be a standalone book set in the Havoc world. Okay. So it's part of the whole series, but it's not part of, it's not one of the parts of the series. Does that make sense? Am I making any sense? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. It's a standalone book uh, <laughs> based on a person that you'll meet in book four. Okay. So I'm okay. very excited about it. I just, just finished it off and sent it over to, to beta readers this morning. Oh, that's fantastic. So. That's got to be so exciting because I know as an author, when you put your book out there, it, for starters, that in and of itself is like awing and, and surreal. And then when you start seeing, you know, you're able to track things and, and see where you're at. And for you to have been a uh, new release bestseller, that has got to be such a a fabulous feeling. I was able to be an international bestseller on one of the books that I co-authored, but 
that's just got to be such an amazing feeling and also to have it released on your birthday and just to have everything to flow the way it has uh, I would just uh, you've got to be giddy <laughs> You, I'm, I'm definitely giddy. I'm also uh, humbled. It's just because, <laughs> you know, it, without people reading, it, none of it happens. And I'm just so thankful. And I, I can't even tell you how appreciative I am of the readers. And I get uh, almost every day I get a nice email from somebody. <laughs> and it's just, it's my, I love it. I love it. I'm just, I, 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 I don't even know what else to say. I love it. <laughs> Well, and you know, you know what's really cool is you and I are, um, we live faith-led lives, and even more so since we've been sick, and when I, I, I'm seeing this from the in, the outside in, and I'm just curious if you are feeling it, have you stepped into your calling? Because the way I see it, you've stepped into your calling. <sighs> I don't know. I, you know, I'm, I love it. I'm really enjoying it. I, I would like to, to be quite honest, I'd like to do a little bit more. I have this dream, I guess, okay. of maybe having a yearly, um, like a get together, like go, you know, invite people who want to come camping and then have people, you know, I don't know, like the mountain man and the mountain woman who help. <laughs> give presentations while we're camping and we, you know, that's, I can't, I would love to do, to do a little bit more that's to cool. help people in their preparedness lifestyle. Awesome. I get that. I, that's kind of where we're at and that's really awesome. And, and so this is, this is the beginning of your calling then because it's really cool how it kind of envelopes and how it how it unfolds as you step into it. But I can just, and I get what you're saying because that is our passion too and our heart is to be able to continue to help people and to reach people, to inspire people. And on those lines, this woman here has inspired me greatly to step into the fiction world. So I'm, I'm hoping that as we move on this year in our life and in, and physically moving from here, that that kind of starts to unfold for me. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so appreciative of you for inspiring that in me because it's something I've wanted to do for so long. Well, I can't wait <laughs> to read what you write. <laughs> Ah, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I know you have other things to do today. So um, I want to give you an opportunity um, if there's something else or anything else you would like to say to my audience, because I know they are going to be checking you out. I know that they probably just fell in love with you just like I have over the years. And I know you will have new readers joining you. But is there something else or anything else that you would like to share um, while you have the opportunity on here? Well, I can't really think of anything else. I think we've, we've, gosh, we talked about so much in such a short time. I know. I'm just so, so grateful <laughs> for your friendship over the years. And, um, I, I just thank God for allowing me to get to know you and your family. <laughs> Likewise, girl. Likewise. And I want to give you an open invitation as you continue to progress and things continue to unfold for you with your calling as well as your books. Uh, please reach out to me and let me know because I know that my audience would love to hear from you again and know what's going on as you progress through uh, the additional books you have coming. So keep me updated on the release dates. We will get you back on here. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Millie, I love you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. And I am just so grateful, too, for your friendship. And, and guys, just have a fantastic day. We will see you on the next episode of Mountain Woman Radio. And if you've enjoyed the show, be sure to um, leave a review on the podcast app that you are listening to or give it a thumbs up and leave us some comments on YouTube. And also, just a little update, I have gotten um, Mountain Woman Radio on iHeartRadio. It's going uh, to be on TuneIn as well as, there's another one, Pandora. So um, check it out if you are on those apps. Uh, you can find my podcast there as well. So guys, take care, and we will catch you on the next one. God bless.
Many of you are seeking better health in the new year. As many of you also know, I have been on a four-year journey regaining my health from breast implant illness. And as a result of that, I've experienced a lot of ups and downs, a lot of unusual things with my health. And I have located a company that I feel you need to get in touch with and that you need to be aware of. CreatingBalancedHealth.com enables you and I the ability to take our health and our well-being into our own hands. Creating Balanced Health offers saliva and hair analysis testing along with a relationship with them to help you to either just review your health or to regain your health and it is a very amazing company they are very friendly and very wonderful to work with and what they offer is very inexpensive in addition to that as a subscriber to Mountain Woman Radio as well as TreyerWilderness.com you have the opportunity to get a discount if you go to creatingbalancedhealth.com and check out any of their products, their scans, when you go through checkout, you just need to enter Treyer Wilderness as the coupon code and you will be extended a very generous discount on their services. I can't say enough about them. They have helped me at a time when I had issues going on that could not be resolved or figured out and they very quickly helped me pinpoint what was going on in my system and uh, worked with me to correct that situation. The other benefit to this again is that it is inexpensive and as many of you know it's very difficult to get a handle on our health today because of the cost. So I wanted to share this with you all so that you have the opportunity just as I have to get a handle on my health and to improve my health in a very amazing way, one that we have total control of and one that we are working with people that want to help us get healthy, not just mask the problems that we're experiencing. So check out creatingbalancehealth.com and be sure to enter coupon code Trayer Wilderness at checkout. And you will be hearing a lot more about their services and how they've assisted me in upcoming podcasts and videos. So check them out, creatingbalancedhealth.com.